You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you may on Twitter the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at back at you with another Let's Play episode of Lust Shards. So y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm Chan, you were up. And let's go. Y'all already know about my beautiful girlfriend L taking commissions and my little spon my not sponsorship, my little uh my, my little affiliate affiliate program thing with Green Man Gaming, all that is in the description down below. If y'all are interested in that, just take a look. Anyway, let's jump right in, shall we? All right, because as I said, the tour guide a bit, bit was just an excuse to spend time with this handsome man. The wind was blowing harder as the sun disappeared, ruffling his fur and playing with his cheek fluff. I wish I was the one doing that. Lucky Mother Nature. We sip our waters and look around at the view, leaning on the thick safety barrier. So? What do you think? Uh, which part? Everything. I love getting feedback about things I enjoy. Out of ten. Well, let's see. The academy itself. To put it simply, I can't wait to start actual classes. Oh. I didn't mean to click on that. The rooms are so much more different than regular college or high school classrooms. I feel like I might actually learn something for once. Wait till we meet the teachers as well. Miss Chichi is a sweetheart. She has a soft spot for first years. And Mr. Rolsar will make you hold on to your life as tight as you can, you can and never let go. What does that mean? They'll teach you to appreciate life. I'm not going to spoil the fun. I usually like to hold good relationships with my teachers, so I get that I shouldn't be worried about ones who have a stick shoved up their, you know what? <laughs> not at all. Well, except for the sex teachers. The sex teachers? Well, you know how to gather up the maximum amount of energy from a night falling, right? Of course, you make them lustful with your body. Yes, but do you actually know what to do in that situation? How to utilize your body? Um, drop off, drop off your pants? That's a simple yet effective strategy, but what if the night phone is particularly interested in males? And dropping your pants will do nothing for it. You've got a point. So that's why we have to learn with experience, with lessons from professionals. Very interesting. So yeah, I'd give the Academy itself a 9 out of 10. Consider me impressed. About the campus. I adore this campus. It's so big. Can it even be named a campus? Well, it is technically a city. Campus isn't even the official name of the territory. We just call it that because, well, that's what you expect to call the place around an academy. I've read there are no cars in here. You'd be right. The city itself only has about three miles in diameter, so there's no need for cars. But what if you want to get out of the city? Running a car is possible, plus the few people who do go who do own one have their own little garage at the end of the city near the gate. I see. All right, are we allowed to go whenever on uh, to go wherever on the campus? Yep. As long as it's not private property. You're advised not to go outside the barrier, but it's not like teachers are on guard on guard duty all all around the walls at all times. <laughs> so if I were to go into the forest right now, you wouldn't tell anyone? Um Dallin. You wouldn't tell, right? If you were to go, I would be coming for you. Coming with you. He avoided the question. It is too dangerous. Are there no hunters taking care of nightfallen outside the barrier? This is a hunter's academy, Travis. We are the hunters who take care of them. But not without supervision. So please, tell me you won't go there alone. If you really want to sometime, just tell me and I will accompany you. Alright, I promise. Thank you. Let's see. People. As for people, I haven't met any locals yet, I don't think. Uh, teachers either. But as for fellow students? I'm thinking of Tate and Aiden. Just like Dal and they were eager to help and seemed very nice. I think I'll get along with the others just fine. So far, Tate, Aiden, Chelsea, and others seem very friendly. Even if one of them tried to scam me. But I can't help but wonder... How do the locals deal with not having internet, TV, communication with the outside world? Ah, uh, I know this one. Chelsea explained it to me, but I forgot. She does a better job explaining this kind of stuff on the spot. It's something to do with energy crystals the, and antennas. They use those outside the barrier to manage to catch signals for the locals. Students don't get a privilege like that. Why? So we focus on becoming good hunters. And how are my Sunday morning cartoons going to affect that? Well, I, well, you, you, you see. Hmm. I got you there. You really have. Hey, are you going to poke holes in all my rules from now on? Only the stupid ones. Can't wait for those future debates. So I think I'd give the people here a 10 out of 10. About you. You are a great guide. I already feel like I know this place thanks to you. His tail starts wagging even more than before, if that's even possible. Walking through the halls, everybody greeted you smiling and knew your name. You said you wanted to be like the headmaster someday, but I think you're already there. In a way. He looks at me dumbstruck for a moment. Did I say something wrong? Thank you so much, Travis! Whoa! Uh, okay, we're hugging now. Uh, there, there, no need, no need for tears. 
That means so much to me. I take this opportunity to feel the fur around his neck, softer than the cotton in his suit, and drink in his violet perfume. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little emotional there. It's fine, I don't mind. You can get emotional with me any time. What does that even mean? Does that mean I passed? Yeah, 11 out of 10. Well, nothing else. I think that's it for now. Nice! It seems like I got a high enough score. He aced the test. I love hearing those words. He looks into my eyes, his gaze traveling slowly all over my face until it fixated on my lips. Is he getting hot? Is it getting hot in here or is it just me? Yep, your body temperature is definitely rising all right. Among other things. There you are! Finally, thank goodness! Rude interruption. Sir, we need you to stamp the papers for the new members. They want to come inside the room. We can't allow them until you make them official. Dallin lets out an exasperated sigh, the new arrival clearly stepping on a nerve. You know, I like rules. I think they're important, but don't you think that's uh, taking it a tiny bit too far? The man lets out the loudest, most shocked gasp I've ever heard. All right, all right. Come coming. I'm coming. Well, we were about done here anyway. You don't mind if I... No, no, no. Not at all. Duty calls. I get it. He touches his pointy fingers together, looking away shyly. Um, I'll be in my office if you need me. He can't enter the do- We get it. <clears throat> we get it, Killjoy. Ouch. I'll just wait by the stairs. Yeah, you better. I suppose this is it for now. See you later, Travis, or tomorrow, most likely. See ya. See ya. I expect more tours in the future. This was only the beginning. I watched his back walk towards the exit and only turned around when the tip of his tail was completely out of sight. That was a little disappointing, to say the least. He did not seem very happy with his member giving him that news. Obviously, we were having fun, and it got ruined by rules. I don't think that's all there is. That was a snap. Are you suggesting he let his bottled-up emotions come out? That's exactly what I'm saying. To be fair, who wouldn't be under a lot of stress in this situation? I wouldn't be surprised if he secretly plots to murder everyone in the school. Maybe he has evil plans written in a diary. I doubt it goes that deep. But if he's under a lot of stress, I could perhaps help him out. We'll see when the time comes. So, what do I want to do now? Hmm. Oh, right. Chelsea. I promised her I'll help her. Let's see. Where did she say her workout was, I wonder? Didn't she give you a little map to use? Oh, yeah. I take out the folded piece of paper from my backpack. The map is surprisingly well made. She did say she's an inventor, so it's not too odd that she'd be able to draw a good map. Unfortunately, the architecture here is a tad too detailed. It takes me a while to actually understand how to navigate it. Combine that with the fact that I don't yet know the building at all. And you have a lot. And you have a lost leopard. Scribbles, can you help me here? Yeah, yeah. I'll come to the rescue again. Show me that map again. Hmm. If this is that hallway, and that's the statue. Okay, got it, I think. Just go down three floors, then to the left. You're the best. I know. Using some help from Scribbles. The superior being. I get in front of Chelsea's workshop. Before I knock, I, que I question the real intentions for my presence here. Do I like Chelsea? Do I just want to be a good little pal and help someone out? Or is it to impress down with my civic spirit? Before I can answer to myself, the door swings open. A very enthusiastic raccoon is now in my face. Nice! Just in time! I paint The paint I used to color just dried. Just dried. Nice to see you too. Hmm. You've been standing outside my door for 6.46 seconds. Why didn't you knock? What were you what were you pondering? Hope you didn't get cold feet. <laughs> I, uh... Never mind. Come on in. The inside looks very messy at first glance until you look closely at how almost everything is labeled and has and has its own... It's on what... Has its own designated place. Hmm. That definitely looks like a tinkerer's workshop. Welcome to my little workshop, where all the magic happens. All of it? Did I stutter? S so, what do you need help with? Oh, it's simple. She hands me a pair of goggles similar to the one she has around her neck, but a, li a little bigger, with a lot more weirder lenses. Sit on that chair over there. Yes, ma'am. Goggles acquired. She gives me the goggles. Think of it as an eye exam. She reminds me of that, uh, that hero from uh, My Hero Academia, the inventor gal. Yeah, y'all know who I'm talking about if you've seen that show. I never liked doctors, so that statement made me a little worried. Put these on. I adjust the strap, examine them a bit, and attempt to put them on. Stop! Don't do it! Don't put those on! I take them off and throw the goggles on the floor in a panic. Scribbles! Are you okay? What's wrong? What was she trying to do? 
You're so gullible. I don't know what those even are. It's not funny. Wait, you lied. You should be dead or something bad should have happened to you anyway. I did not. I just told you not to put them on. You decided the reason for it. And your first concern was my safety, not yours. Oh, isn't that cute? Whatever, I hope Chelsea isn't mad. Hey, what the hell was that for? She, she picks up the goggles and inspects them. Oh, oh, silly me, I was, it was set on the x-ray vision. She flicks a switch on them. If you were to look through them directly at me like that, you would have seen me naked. Ha <laughs> ha. You'll pay for this, Scribbles. I'm sorry. I admit I messed up. She sways her tail as she comes closer with her hands behind her back. You're a true gentleman, Travis, and I have good observation skills. Still a bit of an overreaction. However, you're already proving yourself way more useful than my previous assistant. I guess I shouldn't take any risks with you. I'll have someone else test my other invention I planned for the evening. She throws a big syringe with green bubbly liquid into a drawer out of sight. Oh, God. You're welcome. I might have saved your life. Now, the goggles should be fine. Just don't touch any of the lenses, and I, w and I want you to look directly at me. My vision hasn't changed much except for some patterns appearing at the edges. What do you see? Um, what am I looking for exactly? So you don't see anything different? Nope. Perfect. She brings out a small cage covered with cloth. Now look at this. Oh god. She takes the cover off. Inside the cage is a small slimy creature. What the hell is that? Don't worry about it. Just tell me what you see with the goggles. It's glowing. Not very brightly, but noticeable enough. In the center of its mass is a small part glowing even brighter. Cool, so you can see it too. That's a night fallen, by the way. What? Ah! Oh, what happened? Chelsea, is this a night fallen? She smirks. Maybe. This is not okay. What is it doing here? Relax, it's harmless. It's just an experiment, an experiment tool. I'll get rid of it when I'm done. All right, but how is it inside the barrier? Oh, I got a little help from someone. I don't know how they did it myself, so don't ask. This is concerning, but I'll try to overlook it. Great! Now, for the real reason you're here. She brings out a big mirror covered as well. So, what you just saw was energy. The goggles on your eyes are designed to see the amount of energy and magic of energy and magic in creatures. But I didn't see anything on you. That's because I have no magic. And I'm not a nightfawn, so I can't have energy inside me. Unless I were to swallow one's crystal. But they're not very tasty. Not that I ever tried one, of course. I don't I didn't think you did. Good. Because I didn't. Shut up. No, no, I need someone that has magic in them. I assume that if you came here by recommendation, it must be pretty powerful. So that's why I wanted you to help. Just take a look at yourself and tell me what you see. It's gonna be fucking blinding radiance like the sun. Yep. She uncovers the mirror. The image staring back at me was blinding. There was too much light in the way for me to even open my eyes, but I did catch a glimpse of red around the bright hue-colored aura. Chelsea looks surprised when I cover my eyes and turn away from the light that she can't see, already taking notes. Huh. No wonder everyone thinks you and your pals are so special. Pals? Recommended students. She comes closer and touches another switch on the goggles. My vision darkens slightly. Now I can look at my own reflection without having to close my eyes. Wow! Am I the protagonist of this school? Because even if I don't have anyone to compare my aura to, it feels impressive. I'll let you know that most of that is mine. The red one in the majority the red one in the majority of the blue. So don't get too cocky. You're still super weak. Oh. Still. I point sands. Barely. Let me try. And be my guest. Chelsea takes the goggles from me and looks through them without bothering to strap them on. Oh, hell yeah! That's awesome! It seems like your aura has two colors. I would love to see you in action. Let's see how bright it is without the shade. She switches the lens. Oh, oops, that's the x-ray vision. She changes the lens, goes back to the x-ray, then off again. Hey! I saw that. Did, did she just see me naked? I cover myself with my tail. Oh, don't be so dramatic. I've seen my assistants naked countless times. Mostly because their clothes were set on. I mean, uh, caught fire. I shouldn't be too surprised. She keeps playing with the device, shielding her eyes when looking at me. She looks busy and completely focused on her new device, but maybe not too busy to talk to. That'd be a good time to find out more about her. What should I ask about her inventions? Hey, so what are you trying to achieve with this particular invention? Well, for starters, it will help hunters be able to harvest energy at the most optimal levels. Some nightfall need to reach multiple orgasms for a full tank while others might be full as soon as you see them. So you don't have to waste time preparing them. You'll be able to assess some of the magical abilities without needing those time-consuming auditions. The list goes on. I can as I assume you can think of more for yourself. S does something like this not exist yet? Nope. Crazy, right? 
Nobody knows my secret techniques. Mwahaha. <laughs> that was weird. Mwah. I can't do that, Southern. And you're not going to tell anyone. How are you so sure about that? She stops meddling with the goggles, raising her ears, and looks at me sharply while taking small steps in my direction. Not that I'd tell anyone. I have no reason to. Yes, you have no reason. She takes my paws in hers gently. There's some nice. These are some nice fingers. If you ever do betray me, you'd have to kiss them goodbye. Well, why my fingers? Wouldn't the tongue make more sense? <laughs> don't give her ideas, you imbecile. I already have the perfect device for finger cutting, so I don't have to waste time and resources. Oh. But you don't have to worry about that, after all. You're here because I trust you. Right. Um, what other stuff did you invent aside from these goggles and the finger-cutting machine? Why? Do you want to buy some? No, I just... On sale. We have, levi we have levitation boots. We got some invisibility trinkets. Flamethrowers. Bombs. Bombs? Lamp oil. Rope. Bombs. You want it? Mmm. <laughs> what are you looking for, exactly? If you got the money, I can provide. I don't have any money on me. So why did you ask me to show you everything I have on sale? I didn't. Hmm. Let's say I believe you. I'm gonna pause it right This is a funny, funny conversation. I like Chelsea. She's awesome. A little terrifying, though. All right, y'all. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.